start out? You want to start? I'll start. Uh, or we can continue with the music. Welcome back, everyone, to the Weekly Flare. We are now... Why was it serious? This is weird. I, I don't know. We just did that photo math thing. Oh, yeah, we did photo math. It does, uh, it does um, arithmetic very well. We tried to get rid of an integral calculus problem, though, and it freaked out. I have no idea what you just said. Also, I think I was having a problem reading the problem, though, because if someone had taken a picture of, like, a notebook paper and uploaded it, it was not a very fair attempt. No. But nonetheless, it was having problems solving the integral. Um, it tried to simplify, but I don't think the simplification was right, either. I'm going to have to solve my integral in a second eat. Wow, that was actually kind of fun. <laughs> All right, so we are going to do something different. Normally, the second half of the show, we have a, a little bit more structure. This show is going to be kind of a catch-all for some stuff that we thought was interesting this week. First thing on the agenda, jetpacks. Some guys in Dubai made jetpacks, and they flew around and showed them off. Now, we'll link the, we'll link the story so you can see it. This is being reported on from CNET, my friends over at CNET. I love them. I've been John? following CNET for a long time. Oh, CNET. Um, yeah, there's a video. Check this out. Look at these guys. Um, they just made some jetpacks. They really look like um, a wing, like a glider mm -hmm. that you strapped onto your back and um, it propelled you through the air. I think Black Ops 2 kind of did something like this too. Um, I'm sure stuff like this has been in video games, mm -hmm. but this is, this is really cool because, you know, jetpacks, we always have seen them like portrayed, if you watch stuff from like the 50s, 60s, that time period, a jetpack, you've obviously portrayed as like a rocket basically strapped on your back. Yeah. You have some controls. Well, I don't know if it's actually strapped Very James back. Bondy, you know, you got like, the, it's, like it's like a backpack you wear mm -hmm. and then you like, got the controls you hold and you can fly, it's got like a booster button and I guess you tilt to fly. It didn't want to work as well. Like, that's how Iron Man flies, because, like, he uses the boosters from his, like, feet and hands to, like, fly and stabilize him. Uh, that would be very difficult to actually control, because you don't have any surfaces that help with airflow. Mm -hmm. So it'd be very unstable, which is why Iron Man had a lot of problems when he first started flying. Uh, and would still have lots of problems flying any time there's any sort of wind, which, when you're flying, there's always wind. Yeah. Um, and the higher you get in the atmosphere, the more gusty it gets. So these guys made one that actually is like a little airplane wing that has a jet on it, and they fly. Um, and so it's really cool. And so we thought that it would be interesting if we talked about some other sci-fi technology that we think is going to happen in the near future. So I'm going to let you go first. Now, obviously, robots are kind of off the table because... Um, J.J. Abrams has the, the real robot that they use for um, Star Wars. That's an actual robot. They saw it rolling around on stage at the Star Wars celebration. This company in uh, New Zealand is making their robot. So we're going to say robots off the table, even though those aren't the robots anyone really wants. We're going to take them off the table because we're getting there. Robots are going to happen. It's just a matter of time before we have the Jetsons robot made rolling around helping us. You go first because I can't think of it. You can't think of any. Okay. We're going to say self-driving cars are off the table because that's going to happen sooner rather than later. Um, I'm going to say a future tech that I want to see would be a teleporter. Okay. Um, I think teleportation would be cool. I think it's completely impractical. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not going to happen any time like really soon ever. So I kind of am breaking my own rules about things we think will happen soon. But... I think it'd be cool, you know, you could get in the teleporter and like in Star Trek, you know, you could like beam me up Scotty and then they could beam people right to the space station, right back down. They wouldn't have to fly, you know, up and down from the space station. They could just beam, you know, each other right back and forth. And then the only space exploration you'd have to do then is to go to new planets where there's no teleporter set up. Um, they would be able to teleport the space shuttle parts up to space and then assemble it in um, space. Mm -hmm. And then they would save a ton of fuel from having to launch. Um, when you get to, say, like the moon and other planets, you would be able to send supplies. Uh, you'd be able to teleport back and forth. Obviously, there'd still be some time it would take, but I think it would be faster than traveling through space. Mm -hmm. I think you'd be able to get a lot closer to traveling at the speed of light. 
which would still take a while to get anywhere, mm -hmm. but faster than the current time it takes to get anywhere. Now that's not very realistic. Uh, something that I think could actually happen soon. I don't know. A vehicle that does not take gasoline or electricity, but something more that we have here on planet. It's so like a solar powered vehicle? Possibly, maybe lean more towards water or water dirt. Powered. Dirt would be hard because oh, there's not a lot of energy in dirt it could suck no. out. Like it would take a lot of dirt. Uh, potatoes can, bat, can power light bulbs, but that would take a lot of potatoes yeah, to already have a bring your car. Potatoes. I think solar powered, like by the sun, is really the next good step for cars. Not enough power though? Uh, the problem with solar panels is they lose a lot of energy when they absorb the light. Um, they're not able to do a great job converting it. I always want to talk about solar panels on the show, but there's just nothing new to talk about right now. I look like all about every other week. And I just haven't found anything that I thought was interesting enough to bring to the table. But I think solar powered cars definitely, because then they could use the electric cars they're working on to drive around at night when there's no sun. Um, I, th I think solar powered cars are a good choice. I maybe a uh... telecommute like we don't need like the Star Trek communicators because we have cell phones that mm -hmm. can already do that. Um, like uh, flying vehicles of some sort for travel. Flying cars are very scary. People have made flying cars, and uh, it's just a very weird thing. Because then, is the FAA in charge of it? Is the you know Department of Transportation in, in charge of it? Do you need to have a pilot's license as well as a driver's license? What about what about automatic cars where they drive themselves without actually flying? Now, see if it was an automatic car that could fly. Now that's a little bit more reasonable because now it's basically autopilot. Uh, that would work because then you could just basically lay out routes that they would mm -hmm. take and then they could all just follow the route and then when you're going off you would just take the exit down to the road and then drive again. That could work. I like that. And other, and other cars will ping off of each other so right. they don't Right, and they'd all be other. on the same path. It'd basically be like an on rails but the rails would be invisible. Mm -hmm. It'd just be GPS or something. Mm -hmm. I, that, that could work. Um, I would, something completely never happening, I'd like to see lightsabers. Everyone says lightsabers. I feel like I'm wearing my Star Wars shirt today. Brand new. Just came in the mail. You like that? Yeah. A lightsabers. I love to see lightsabers. Kind of control, is it kind of hard to control light? Do you, there's really no way that science or physics has discovered to make light just terminate um, in space. Hmm. Remember that thing I showed you last week or the week before with the 3D box that had like the hologram in it? Yes. Um, that's basically tricking your eyes into thinking that the light is stopping there. Um, it's very difficult if I take a beam of light and then just to have it stop here instead of shining all the way to the root ceiling. So if you made it something that could cut through stuff without a terminator on the opposite end, it would just go until it, it ran out of energy. So it would cut through the ceiling or whatever. It's very hard to make it just stop in a hard yeah. point. It would slowly dissipate and eventually not be able to cut anything but all the way till that point it would, it would slowly it's just hard now is there something like you you could ask your father and say what did you think would not happen that isn't available now today pretty much all the technology in this room cell phones computers yeah. microphones i mean this around. usb microphone even you really okay i mean laptops even that size laptops, cell around. phones um like i said pretty much everything in this room Except for the lights. Uh, the cameras, okay, the, the actual camera we used to record for YouTube, that would probably be something they would, they would see. Maybe not quite that small, but that's something that they could imagine at mm -hmm. least. Cell phones were completely science fiction. I mean, the size that they are. They had like, you know, the huge. Mm -hmm. It depends on what time you're talking about. Like, you're talking about when he was like a kid. Mm -hmm. and, well, like, yeah, when he was growing up. Are you talking about when he was like in college? Mm -hmm. it, it depends on the time period, I guess. Okay. But. Everything that we have in this room didn't exist, basically. Um, yeah. Technology. That was... I'm kind of disappointed in myself. I couldn't think of a better answer than a teleport. Yeah. Shame on me. But that's okay, because we have something more exciting to talk about. Chris, I got a call today from GameStop. Okay. And they said, your Ike Amiibo has finally arrived. Okay. And I thought to myself, oh no. Did I already buy a second Ike Amiibo thinking it was never going to show up? 
Nope, I have not. So, let me grab this bag here. We have added Ike to our wonderful Amiibo collection. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pop him open because, I don't know, Chris, I like to collect these, but I like to display them not in the box. And I'm sure anyone watching this right now is just gonna be screaming, don't open it, because people are collecting these. And to you, I have to say, for you, for me, I like them out of the box and out. I mean, look at this guy, this guy's pretty cool. He's, he's this is move. Ike, he's from Fire Emblem. This cape is very, um, very detailed, he's very detailed. It's very detailed, I really am happy that I now have Ike. So we're gonna put him right here. Um, we're gonna have to rearrange them because now he's blocking people, but we'll do that off the air. But um, otherwise in the world of Amiibo, um, there's some more Marths getting restocked. So if you don't have a Marth, be on the lookout for that. Also, good luck, because apparently they're only shipping out a couple to each store. Um, Nintendo has acknowledged that there's an amiibo shortage, but they have not acknowledged how they're going to fix it, mm. because I don't think they really know how they're going to fix it. But uh, for everyone in North America, we have gotten over the majority of amiibo shipped here. It's like something like the 60% range, just to North America. So we have the hardest time finding any. And we received the most. So Americans are really liking the Amiibo. Part of it, because some of these figures, like Little Mac, this guy, for instance, um, never been available as a figure before. And so a lot of people want this one. Um, they just, they've looked better <laughs> with each one that they've done. And people just like Nintendo figures. They like Nintendo people. And they just have been collecting them. But that's enough about the Amiibos, because well, I could go on forever. How much would you pay if someone were able to make a 3D printing version of you? Like this. Oh, how yeah. much would you pay? I would, well, let's see, I paid, what's the most I paid for one of my Amiibos? I think 30 or $40 after shipping it overseas. So I'd probably pay about that. If it looked, I mean, if it was a good quality and a pose that I thought was really cool. So if anybody can make us. Oh man, if you can make figures of us. Let us know. We will definitely get in contact or with drawings. You. Yeah, drawings of us. We would not pay forty dollars probably, but we would definitely be open to negotiation. Definitely. We want a new. We want a new logo. Mm -hmm. Um, because oh, I didn't tell you. I got some exciting news I need to tell you off Good. here because we can't talk about it officially yet. But uh, we're gonna need a new logo basically. Okay. Um. Okay, but first, before we ramble on to the end of the show about nothing, Chris, what movies did you see this week? I saw a lot of movies in the past two weeks. I saw Interstellar, I saw The Captive, and I saw Cinderella. Cinderella? Like the Disney animated Cinderella? The new one that came out this year. Was that good? My mother, it's her, my mom's favorite movie, and she actually enjoyed this one. It's now her favorite movie for the newer one. So Cinderella with with the, the mice and the fairy godmother yes. and the pumpkin. 2015. Was her favorite movie, and now this new Cinderella is her favorite movie. Yes. So the old Cinderella, the Disney Cinderella from like really old. I'm what, 37? I don't know. I don't even know. I'm not even gonna make a guess. With the mice that sing Cinderella, Cinderella. Yep. Okay, that was her favorite movie. Yes. And now this new Cinderella. Was it animated? No. It was live action. It was live action. Were there mice that talk? Kind of. They didn't really talk. They were just the mice. They they, they you can kind of tell that they were talking, but you just didn't know what they were saying. So they were squeaking? Yes. But she could understand them? Or was yes. she just assuming that she knew what they meant? Exactly. Interesting. But it was like Les Miserables. They did all their singing. Oh, it was a musical. Well, it wasn't technically a musical, but when they did sing, it was all live action, from what I understand. It was all live. Oh, they so like when they sang Les Mis. Okay. Yes. They all sang on set. Interesting. Which is ten times better. Well, is Hugh Jackman in it? Because apparently he can sing, because he was in Les Mis, right? No. He was actually all... Did you know he was in... Um, the newest night of the museum. Yes, I did actually. Did we talk about that? Did we? Oh, we might have. It was a long time ago. I don't know. Uh, was I, it's too bad he wasn't Wolverine. No, but he's done being Wolverine after the next Wolverine movie. Apparently. Yeah. I mean, he's been doing this since like two thousand. Mm -hmm. Was the when the first X Men came out? We I looked it up the other day with someone. Yeah, he's been Wolverine for a long time. So it's gonna be weird not seeing him as Wolverine anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's been good for him. So what did you think of Interstellar? 
Interstellar was good. No spoilers. It was good. Okay. That's where we're going to stop. I'm going to leave it right there. It was good. I just need a little bit of explanation to the end. Um, Periscope just fell off the chair. We lost our feed, which doesn't really matter because I'm the only one watching. Let's fix that. How'd that happen? Hi. Oh, that's okay. We'll cut that out anyways. Oh, there I am. That was weird. I like, just dropped out of holding. Well, okay. Well, um, that was fun. So, um, Interstellar, we're gonna record a spoiler full. Well, if you want, talk and after. We'll have time. If, if you want, okay. We can do like a quick ten minute. Maybe we can upload it for our Patreon supporters only. Okay. Or we could just upload it. Do we have any supporters? No. That'd be a good thing to get them going. I mean, if we don't, if you want to just talk to me about it, I mean, we can. No, we'll record it and upload it somewhere, at least on the website or yeah. something. Um, I saw the Age of Adeline over the weekend. It was good. Uh, it was better than I expected. It was not as good as Benjamin Button. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Mm -hmm. Just because that was more interesting to me, not because... Uh, it wasn't like a, it was a mystery that he was that like why he was that way, but it wasn't a mystery that he was that way. Like everyone obviously knew that when he was born, he looked like an old man, and then aged backwards. Um, obviously, they didn't try to explain why that happened or how it happened or could it really happen. Did they just use that premise to be interesting? Mm -hmm. I thought that was an interesting movie. It was long. Uh, Benjamin Button. Yeah, that's what I Age of Adeline, not as long. Um, they actually kind of explain, I don't, I, I didn't see the trailer for this movie, so I, I don't want to talk too much about it, because mm. I don't know what was actually in the trailer. I assume anyone who cares kind of knows the plot of it. They try to explain what happens to her, why she's the way she is, um, and then she kind of just goes through her life with this thing, and then at the end it kind of stops. Um, there's some interesting, there's an interesting plot twist that, um, Rachel figured out because she knew that somebody was in the movie that I did not. Harrison Ford's in the movie. Wow. So you see a character as a younger person sitting on a bench and she's like, oh, that's Harrison Ford's character. And like, I didn't know he was in the movie. So I didn't know he was in the movie until I saw him on the screen. Um, basically, there's something weird going on and leave it to him to piece it all together and figure it out. Because he's Harrison Ford. I mean, he's Indiana Jones. Is that what made you enjoy it? Uh, that did, that may or may not have made the movie a little bit more interesting to me. But honestly, by the time they, they like, the end of the movie resolved, like there's the climax, you know, and then something happens. Before that happened, probably about 10 minutes before it happened, or 15, 10, 15 minutes before, I was like, oh, I figured out how this movie's going to end. And I was pretty much exactly right. Wow. So, it was a good movie, though. If you, I mean, if you watch the trailer, think it looks interesting, I would definitely will check it out. If you thought Benjamin Button was interesting, you'll probably enjoy this movie as well. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So, Chris, is that all for the week? Should be good. It's about a good 35, 40 minute yeah, episode, definitely. I think. So we're going to wrap it up. So Chris, if we wanted to find you on the internet, where would we go? Well, I'm on Twitter. Uh, now on Periscope and Meerkat. I'm not really liking the Periscope all that much. Um, yeah, uh, Twitter purchased it, so I imagine that they'll eventually do something super with it mm -hmm. to make it more integrated with Twitter than mm -hmm. Meerkat is. But I'd have to say right now, Meerkat definitely has more users, it seems yes. like. So, and I'm on Meerkat, I'm on Vine, Twitter. Twitter would be never lose heart. Vine would be fight with heart. Mm -hmm. And my Instagram is fight underscore with underscore heart. Uh, but I guess we'll get everything figured out with Periscope and Meerkat. Um, we actually do have some news after uh, we oh, do. Oh, yeah. Well, you can go ahead and tell you what you're going to do. Um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to send in that until we're done. I am on Twitter at James Walter, and that's uh, pretty much it. I'm not on Instagram or Vine or any of that crazy stuff. I'm on Meerkat and Periscope because I linked them to my Twitter because I wanted to make sure I got my name. Um, I'm on Facebook if you're into Facebook. Send me a message and say, hey, I found you on the Weekly Flare, and I'll add you. If you just send me a friend request, though, and I don't know who you are, um, I won't add you. So just make sure you tell me you found me on the Weekly Flare if you do that. 
You can find the Weekly Flare everywhere at the Weekly Flare. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Meerkat, Periscope, dot com. We're on the Weekly Flare dot com. We're on Patreon if you're into that. Um, we are on YouTube at the Weekly Flare Podcast. And we have a giveaway we want to do. Yes. We have episode 20 coming up now. Unfortunately, if we don't have about 10 people that submit this, we probably won't do it until episode 25 or until we get enough. Until we get 10 submitted, basically. basically, You know, if we get 10 submitted, you know. uh, Chris, do we have to get our lawyers involved in this giveaway? There's lawyers. Do we have to get our lawyers involved? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. All this being said, if you shout us out on Facebook and on Twitter, uh, we will put you in a raffle and you will be able to win... Uh, either a twenty or a, a fifteen or a twenty dollar card, most likely. What do you want to do fifteen? We can do fifteen. We can do twenty. We can oh, see okay. about fifteen. We'll do fifteen dollars. Um, either an iTunes card or a Google Play card or maybe something. If you guys have other suggestions, we might put throw that in as well. Um, but yeah, so shout us out. Make sure you tag us either on Twitter at the Weekly Flare. I think if you tag us on Facebook, the weekly flare, I think we get a notification of that. Okay. I'm really not sure how that the Facebook pages work. I think we get a notification. I should get a notification if you take the weekly flare on Facebook. If you shout us out and a friend shouts us out, uh, your friend can also be submitted as well. Yeah. As many people as can shout us out, we'll throw you in a big hat. And if you miss that episode that week for some reason, we'll still let you win. We'll just take, make sure we can just get a hold of you because yes. we'll have your Facebook or your Twitter. So we'll be able to get a hold of you yes. unless you know, hey. You won. Just give us your address and we'll send you out something. We'll ship it to you. We promise. We won't. No funny business. We won't come looking for you. Are we doing it only North America? Um, sure. Okay. Only North America. I don't even know if we have any out. out. So what's that? Just Canada and the United States? Yes. Um, I don't have Royal Mail. I mean, I could send it to Royal Mail, but we'll just do North America and see how it goes. That's our big news. We'll remind you next week. Sorry. Well. Sorry for all our international listeners, <laughs> but. We'll get you next time, maybe. It's, we'll see how this goes. Yes. Anyways, that's all for this week. So make sure you join us next week. We'll be live on Meerkat again. And we'll be on YouTube after that. And we're, of course, always on the podcast. You can find us on iTunes. Chris, you can find us on Stitcher. Okay. We're on Stitcher now, so that's cool. Of course, you could just go to theweeklyplayer.com and find everything right there. Everything. Except for the YouTube, because the link's messed up for some reason. We'll fix that. I'm working on it. You can check out our bios. Yeah. Short bio. Read our short bios. There's a form you can fill out and send us an email. Of course, you could just email us. Our email is in the show notes. So go check that out. All right. We're going to get out of here because we're just rambling now. Yep. So we're going to go record a quick interstellar spoiler that will tell you where you can find that. And then we're going to play some Smash Brothers or Mario Party or both. So we'll see you again in seven days. Take it easy. Peace.